It's a piece of 2x4 and today what we're going to do is just hand carve a nice simple old-fashioned whirligig propeller. So that would have two blades. It's pretty simple. But you want to get everything symmetrical. You want the left side of the propeller to be equal to the right side in, in length and weight. So it's important to have a piece of wood that doesn't have too many big heavy knots in it. So you select a piece uh, that's clear of knots, like over here, this piece, this side here. From here to here is pretty clear. And we'll check like on the outside if we can see any other knots. You can make it as, as long and as thick and as wide as you want. The only thing is uh, when you carve it out, you need to have a thick enough piece of wood to put your angle in for the propeller so it can catch the wind. And if you have a square piece of wood and you go to edge to edge, you'll have a perfect uh, 45 degree angle if you cross across here exactly. I'm probably going to do something somewhat less than 45, but I am going to cut this piece of wood down so it's closer to square, not perfectly square. So I'm selecting my best, cleanest piece of wood that's 12 inches on this. And then I'm going to mark it off. It's just a nice little simple carpenter square to get everything nice and straight. So a 14 inch propeller. The bigger they are, the more dramatic it is, right? Fourteen inches. That makes everything simple because half of fourteen is seven. Got it right on fourteen. Okay, there's there's a fourteen inch chunk of two by four. We're gonna turn it we're gonna turn it into a propeller, whirly gig propeller. Okay, now I'm going to narrow this down a little bit because I don't think uh, we have enough thickness here to get very much angle on the prop. There's two inches right there. Got to make sure the line is in a place that you can see it when you have it on the table saw and hidden from your view. Make sure this is straight. It doesn't always lock straight. So that's pretty close to two inches. Get the trusty push stick out. Turn on the top there. Okay, that looks pretty good. That's my center. And why am I being so careful? Because your blades have to be symmetrical or you're going to have a heavy blade and it's not going to spin in anything but the heaviest winds. Now, if you don't get this right the first time, you can always trim a little bit off of one end or the, off the long end. So you can see that wasn't, I'm not very far off where the line was anyway. So that's going to be close enough. Now the other thing you have to do, you do want to get it on the center this way. Not only this way, this is the most important way of course, but also in the center across the short ways. So this, we said this was two inches, so half of two inches is one inch. Easy peasy. Mark that. Get it as close as you can. Two inches this way, half of two is one. This way was about 14, so seven inches. Close enough. Any, any 
abnormalities you can fix afterwards. Now, to carve this out, I'm going to mark the ends and that will set my angle. So I'm going to draw a line from edge to edge. The first line you draw doesn't matter. Just pick an edge and draw a line. A diagonal line from edge to edge. As close as you can get it to right on the edge. This sets up the angle. Whatever it might be, I'm not going to worry about it. It's not super critical. Whirly gig will probably work from almost any angle from 30 degrees to, to 55 degrees. So that's what I have there. It's just an angle. That's going to be the blade angle of the propel blade. Now, if I carve down to that line, I mean, I'd have nothing left. This would be thin, and I want a nice uh, thick, like a quarter inch. I want a quarter inch blade, at least a quarter inch. So what I'm going to do is draw a parallel line on either side of that, uh, eighth inch on either side approximately, to give me a nice quarter inch blade. So I'm doing that now. Just an eighth inch on either side or close to it. So this is what this, is what this looks like. Can you see that? So what I'm going to do is carve down to these lines and just take all this wood will be taken out. All this here and this here. Now any method you can use to cut that, you could, you could you know, do this, you could cut that on a bandsaw. It gets a little tricky when you get close to the center because you want to leave, you want to leave a good inch on each side for the hub. You know, if you have no hub, you, your blade will be very weak. So let's go ahead and draw in, you know, it doesn't have to be a circle, but I'm just going to use, I have a circle guide, so let's use that. All right, two inch circle on the circle guide. Just to keep it everything easy, draw a circle. You don't, this doesn't have to be a circle. You know, to keep this easy, maybe you don't have a circle guide, okay? All you got to do is come out an inch on either side here from the center. Come out one inch on either side. Make a mark. Okay, and then let's make it square to start with. Keep everything simple. I'm just drawing one inch on either side. Keep it simple and symmetrical. You can make this, you can make it smaller, you can make it bigger. This gives me a pretty good sized blade and it gives me, I want to stop carving when I get right here. So I'm going to, so I don't go over, I'm going to go ahead and mark this all the way around the whole blank. I call this the propeller blank. I'm going to mark this all the way, I'm also going to mark the center line all the way around. I'll carry this center line all the way around. Back in the 30s and 40s, the model airplane guys would quite often carve their own propellers. So there's, there's what it looks like so far. I've marked it all the way around. So the idea is going to be to remove this these triangles. You can use you can use a spoke shave, you know, a carving knife, uh, any kind of tool to remove this down to this line. You remove it down to this line. So here's the trick. This is the trick to make your propeller spin. You when you go to the other side that you haven't marked yet, it's got to be opposite. It's got to be the opposite of, of this. So on the other side it's going to be here and here. So I'm going to bring these lines all the way down. This will give me, again, this will give me a guide for cutting. So I'm going to bring these lines that I made here all the way down the edges here. I'll bring them down. I'm just going to use my finger as a stop and slide the pencil straight down. This is pretty easy to do. Get a nice straight line on there. This is what this is going to be your guide for carving. My guide. Okay, I'm going to do it on both both sides. It's 
See how I carried that? I carried that line. I carried these lines all the way down. And this is the material that I'm going to remove. So you can kind of mark that so you don't get mixed up. Marking that with X's, that's what I'm going to remove. Okay, we've marked this side, we've marked the, the, the wood that we want to take off, and the critical thing here is to go opposite on the opposite side. So, turning this around to the opposite side, I can see here on my lines the side that I don't want to mark. So, I'm going to mark it from here to here. And then I'm going to repeat exactly what I did on the other side on the first side. Okay, we're going to go edge to edge opposite the other side Alright, then I'm gonna mark I'm gonna mark an eighth of an inch to get a nice quarter inch blade, maybe a little more than an eighth. Just you just need a guide here. You're gonna finish it when you sandpaper and your carving knife, you're gonna finish this. See that? And now I'm gonna bring these edges just like I did here. I'm gonna bring these edges down to the to the one inch line of center. So I have a a hub. Okay, so I just mark that with my finger and run the line. Real easy, real quick. Boom. Okay, do this one, same. You had to do this four times. Super easy. Okay, one more and we're done with the marking. The green the pencil cut the green there. All right, so this is going to be removed, and this, and this. We're going to carve this away, carve that away. This, this, this. Now, now that before you start carving, though, it'd be a good time to drill the center hole, dead center. While you've got everything square and flat, it's easier to drill a good square center hole. And I highly recommend a, uh, not necessary, but it makes it great if you have a little drill press. I got this uh, Harbor Freight. It seems to work all right. I'm going to drill a quarter inch hole just to keep everything simple. Quarter inch hole. And you want to drill this hole right right on through. So adjust the height of your table and the uh, quill to go right through. And then I'm going to use a piece of scrap, half inch scrap plywood here that's nice and flat to make sure it doesn't chip out on the, bo on the bottom of the piece. That just helps it. If you hold that tight against there while you drill it, it reduces the chances of it making a big chippy old hole there. Okay? See how nice and clean that hole came out because I used it. Now that's what can happen if you don't have a 
piece. It chips out. Of course, this is plywood. So there's the there's the cutout and the basic design of any Whirligig propeller. I mean, you could make this you could make this out of a full piece of two by four if you wanted. Just carve it. So now my next thing is to remove as much of this wood as and as quickly and easily as possible until I get down to the close to the line here and I'll do that with uh, uh, whatever tools I can find a spoke shave or a draw knife or just a carving knife sander you can use a sander on that to get it to finish it up now I could do it the way Jethro Bodine does and just whip out your old Whitland knife your carving knife and carve this away that could take some time. No doubt that's the way the old timers did it. They didn't have television or internet or anything, so they had time on their hands to do work on their crafts. This would take quite a bit of time. Maybe after you, if you hit a knot, it becomes problematic when you hit a knot like that. It's really tough to get that out. The alternative is to set up the band saw like I have here by tilting the table over. I didn't measure the degrees. Tilt the table until the blade matches my line here exactly. And I just match the blade. Here's the blade. Match them up. Now you don't want to do this by hand because you'll go all over the place. Uh, not to mention it's probably pretty dangerous. So what I'm going to do is put a block in here. I put a block of wood. And I make sure that this block of wood sets me up so that the blade is outside the line. I'm going to leave it a little bit to carve and sand in case this blade tends, I mean they do tend to wander. In case it wanders I leave myself a little bit of space. In this case I've left about a little less than an eighth of an inch. And then on the end you gotta decide, you know, do you want to go right up to the hub and then cut and you'll have a square? You'll have a square hub? Or do you want to do it like a, an airplane propeller and have it curve? So once I get close to the end I'm gonna stop and cut the rest out with a uh, with the sander or uh, a Fordham tool or uh, some sort of a you know carve it a little bit sand it go back and forth until I get this contour like a nice propeller the way I want it leaving it attached so that when I flip it over I'll have something to hold on to. So I'll do both sides with the same board so they both even. You kind of watch on the back side to make sure the blade isn't wandering too much. Because I have a line here line I drew earlier you can watch the blade make sure it stays and you see in this case it's wandered quite a bit the blade will tend to follow the the grain of the wood especially if it hits a hard spot So now I'm going to go in here and cut this. I guess I'll do the other side 
first before I have to change the table over again. Now it's the same angle, it's just opposite directions, so you can just go ahead, you don't have to change anything for this. Right now I'm going to just cut, cut out these scrap pieces, get them out of the way. I want to start this with a really sharp blade. It'll go better. Alright, that's it. That's our first... That's the first, uh... Cut. Towards becoming a propeller blade. I probably could have gone in a little tighter on that line. But I don't want to I don't want to screw it up. So leave space, leave room. Let's do the next one. That gives you a pretty good view of what I've taken off here. All right, let's do the other side. Hopefully, the blade and the table are 90 degrees, and I'm holding this the center line of the blade perpendicular to the table. Now that uh, would turn in the wind if there's no wind today, but that, if there was any wind, this would definitely, uh, that has the angle on it. You know, it looks kind of blocky, but that's when you uh, go over to the sander and uh, take, I'm going to take a lot, I'm going to put a rough piece in the belt sander, in the little, the little uh, Harbor Freight belt sander I have floating around here somewhere, and we'll sort of put a brand new rough piece in there and just use that to carve this down and smooth it out. Let's do that now. Here's a little Harbor Freight 1 by 30 inch belt sander. It's got a little hook up here for the 
vacuum for the shop vac, which I am going to use. But I, I found the uh, grits, and supposed to be all these different grits, anywhere from 40, 60, 100, 180, 220, 320, but the only one they have for months and have in stock is the 120 grit. So this is a nice fresh one. I'm going to put this on. Let's give it a little test run. Alright, that's ready to go. Put the cover back on. I think this was like 35 bucks a couple of months ago. Uh, one inch, this is a one inch belt and you can just move it across and shape it and all kinds of fun stuff. So, so the uh, vacuum outlet doesn't fit. It's exactly the same size. But I have a piece of PVC tubing, white PVC from Ace Hardware, scrap. Look at that, it's like it's made for it. I saved my lines when I cut, so I have a place to go to. Always save your line when you do a cut, so you know where you're supposed to cut to.
so we're getting there. Now I've got this uh, a little bit thinner at the tip, just like a real propeller. They're thinner at the tip, and then they get thicker towards the base here. Now I got to find something to round this out, make it look smooth and contour it. And it so happens, it's, it's a happy coincidence that the round part here is pretty close to the contour I want. Anyway, I can start to, I can start to uh, dial it in there with this guy. I'm going to change my vacuum over, put it on this. I'm doing this uh, by eye. Uh, a, a propeller maker, they use a series of templates and they, they carve to the template. They're making a, a, a real wooden propeller for an airplane, but I'm just doing this by eye. Now I've got the, a nice basic shape. I saved the lines as much as I could so I know where I'm aiming for. At this point I could, I could curve the tips. I could take a, a circle template and make nice curved tips or just leave it like this. I want to I'm going to carve these out a little bit more but you get the idea. We're getting there. This would work. If you put this out in the wind it would definitely spin. Still a little heavy, a little thick probably take a little more off. I'm not quite to the line. I think I had that, I wanted that line at uh, three-eighths of an inch. Maybe a quarter inch at the tip and three-eighths to a half at the, at the base here. So here's where we started. It's a blank, a blank piece of clean wood. And then then we marked it. It's, remember, it's, it's not square. It's, uh, I don't want a 45 degree angle, so something less than 45. So it's not square. And I marked all my center line, drilled the center line hole, marked how long the blades are going to be from the center line, which in this case I used one inch. The ends are marked on opposite diagonals. Or they should be, let's see. Yeah. Okay. Pretty simple. Once you have your guidelines drawn, then you can commence to whittling. And uh, a spoke shave or a draw knife would be good if you have a nice uh, vise. You clamp some wooden pieces in the vise to help keep it from smashing the metal from smashing the wood and use a, a spoke shave on this. That would work real nice. Small spoke shave. Some sandpaper. Now final sanding I'll do with a strip of sandpaper. Just pull it up across here. If you really want to make these uh, fancy, but instead of using a single piece of wood, laminate like a uh, Something like yellow pine, uh, I mean yellow cedar, white cedar, yellow cedar with white pine. You get the get difference in colors, two different colors, and then uh, maybe quarter inch strips. Glue them together, lam laminate them, and then do all your mark out and cut it, and it'll really look nice. Getting there. I like the way this comes out when you smooth it.
Okay, there it is. There's the propeller. And the acid test is to take it out and see if it will spin in the wind. Very little wind. There it goes. It works.